Hello everyone, this is Laura Hartwig, and today I'd like to go over part two of my tutorial series for gravity forms. Last week we created a very simple form, which is what most people use gravity forms to do. But gravity forms has many features that you won't want to miss out on, so let's go over them today. First, let's start with the form settings. This is the first box that you'll be filling out. Usually people come in and just put in the title and possibly a description. That's fine, but that's only part of what you can do. When you put in the title and description, keep in mind that you can either hide or show these when you enter the form on the page. So what you do, um, can, you don't have to worry about people seeing it. The thing down here that most people don't notice is there's a label placement option. The default is top aligned and having the description placed in below inputs. But you also have the option of having it left aligned or right aligned. So let's take a look at what that looks like. We'll just update the form and then go to it here on the page. As you see right now the description is above the form box. But when we refresh the description is on the left side. Now depending on the layout of your page, how wide it is and how long you want to be, this could be a good option. So keep that in mind. Okay, next, now that we've filled out everything in the Properties tab, let's move to the Advanced tab. The first thing that we're able to do is select a different form button. The default form button is something very plain as you can see here but we can put in an image. So any button that we've created through an image, I've already copied and pasted my image path here. So when I update the form and update my page, you can see that this is my own button that I've put in. So that's a nice option to help you uh, make your form match the rest of your site. Okay, another thing that we can do under the Advanced tab is enable conditional logic for this form button. Now if we want to do this, uh, we can choose to show or hide the form button based on if uh, the people have filled out different uh, questions on the form. So if you want to make sure that people aren't submitting the form until they filled it all out, this is one option for you. The next option is to put in your own CSS classes here. Again, this is going to help you customize your form to make it uh, blend with your site. The next option is to limit the number of entries. When you check this button, you can limit the number of total entries, entries per day, week, month, or year. So let's say you're doing a drawing and you want to make sure that only a certain number of people enter. You can use this and once that number has been reached, here you type in the message saying, sorry, we've had all the submissions we can have for this week, please try next week, or something like that. So that's a nice option. You can also schedule a form. Maybe you only want the form to be available on certain days and maybe the time for the drawing is up after a certain day. So you can just put in your dates here, start and end, and then an expired message for uh, anybody who tries to access the form once the form is no longer available. Another option here is to enable the anti-spam honeypot. Now this is something that is uh, an option with the reCAPTCHA field. So you can do that to make sure you're not getting too much spam. If you want to enable animation, that's nice. It makes a nice little sliding alum, uh, animation when displaying and hiding all the conditional logic fields. And then lastly here, we have a check to be able to require users to be logged in in order to fill out the form. So those are all nice options. Now let's move over to the confirmation tab. Once people have submitted your form, you have the choice of showing them text uh, which you can customize here. You can send them to a page, so select one of your different pages. You can have a thank you page and we'll be in contact with you shortly or something like that. Or you have the option of redirecting them to another website. So um, these are all very nice options that you can use with Gravity Forms. Okay, that's all for today. Next week we'll be going over some even more, even more great features with Gravity Forms. Hope to see you back then.